What's going on guys? This is Juan from Red Pen Media and I'm here with this video to share with you how you can export your videos and keep your color information. This has been a big problem I've been going through with my team for some time and spent hours of research and never really got an exact answer. So with a lot of research, a lot of testing and experimenting, we came up with a conclusion. It's an extra step but I would rather take this extra step and keep my color information on my exports. So here we go. First thing I'm gonna show you is a sample project here. Dealt with a lot of vibrant colors and you know we edited everything. We put all the colors that we wanted into the edit. And of course, when we exported it, it looked nothing like we have in the program. So here is the example. So I want to open this on QuickTime. Yes, I've read a lot of things that if you open it on VLC, it keeps the color information. But the thing is, what person is going to actually download the video, open it on VLC to see it in its true color form? Pretty much no one. And pretty much another thing that we've realized is when you upload the flat color video on a platform like YouTube or Vimeo, it stays the same way with the flat color. So here we go. We exported it and let me go back to that same frame and as you can tell it looks much more flatter on the export okay side by side and then with my trick as I call it this is what it looks like after same program as well quick time so it just shows you that what you get is going to be pretty much universal for the most part but you can immediately tell the difference. Look at that. Look at that color difference here compared to here. Very close to here. Actually, there's a bit more color information on my final render because there are some extra uh, tools that you can utilize in After Effects. So that's the trick is exporting your video in After Effects. So there's two ways you could do this. You can either you can either um, export the whole sequence into After Effects or um, if you don't have time for all that, sometimes there could be hiccups. What I like to do is I um, export the video out of Premiere um, in the highest quality possible with no compression. So once you do that, let's go to After Effects. Let this thing load up real quick. Okay, perfect. So let's load it up. Let's do a new composition from footage. And I am going to grab the original file. Okay, here we go. So this is the video with the flat profile. And just to make sure that we are on the same thing, I kind of A and B it, where you can kind of see that here is flatter than here, which is the final render. Um, it looks flatter than this one here in the original program, and then this is the export. So the cool thing about this is there's already more color um, information in the After Effects program because I imported this file that looks very dry and flat and it kind of brought back some color information. Not enough though. So usually what I like to do is bring in the file, right click, I go to effect, and I use the vibrance tool. And pretty much what I do is I try to A and B from the premiere of which I was uh, adding the original color. So uh, 20 vibrance, let's see, uh, 15 saturation, you kind of eyeball it where this actually looks like there's more color information than here, which is fine because if you're going to create an H.264 format to make it smaller, you will lose a little bit of color information. You will, but it'll still be way better than this one over here. So once you apply the color that you want in the video and then you can scrub through it, make sure everything's cool. Oh, the colors are really nice, all this, cool. All right, then what you want to do 
and here's the important part is um, and as you could tell I don't really use this program too too often so let's do uh, render queue give me one second here oops it's over here my apologies render queue so we're gonna add it to the render queue oh, I'm blind and then you just want to look through your settings okay um, everything looks right here but here is the most important part is your output module okay you want to click here and format options you have to go here you want to turn the animation to the 422 HQ setting and what that's going to do is going to unlock the ability to change your depth okay and for me to be on the safe side I like to turn millions into trillions of colors you might get a little warning saying that the the color depth is out of um, out of the index or something like that which you might see here but that's fine so we're gonna hit okay okay and then let's just do F F F F F on the desktop okay we're gonna hit save and then we're gonna render it out yeah right here is the warning that I usually get which is fine output color depth exceeds project color depth that's fine so we're gonna hit okay we're gonna let this render All right, perfect. So let's compare the files. So we can go back here, we can go here to the clip right here. It's a good reference, a lot of colors. Okay, and then let's go to desktop. Let's go to FFF. Let's open on QuickTime. And let's compare. Okay. You keep a lot of your color information still. Okay, this looks alike. And you can experiment if you want to put a little more saturation, you can, but um, it always will seem like um, After Effects will have more color information, which it usually will, but it's a huge difference. And I'm here trying to find this file really, really quick just to show you the A and B. So here was the original. Okay. Here's the original that we usually get with the problems that we're having. And here's what I just exported. And you keep the color information when you upload it to Vimeo. So it's an extra step, but it's what's working right now for us to keep our color information and it's not that much of a headache, but I just wanted to share this with you guys and all the editors and colorists that are having problems that utilize Premiere as their output program. Um, so yeah, hopefully this works for you guys and let me know what you guys think.